Have you ever heard about the term manifestation and wonder what it means, but has been confused by all of the talk and discussion on books like The Secret or how to use affirmations to make what you want become reality, how to speak things into existence, but don't know to go left or right with all the information that's out there? Well, you're in luck because today we're going to talk about the practical process of manifestation and it is real simple and no this is not a science that I have uncovered this is a science that another individual with over 50 years of experience in spirituality has actually summarized for our benefit but I have some bad news so let's get the bad news out of the way and that is manifestation is not like a get-rich-quick scheme. There is work that has to be done in order to make manifestation a reality and to make it something that works well in your life. And in this discussion, I'm going to show what I have discovered about manifestation that is practical and useful and not this pie-in-the-sky theory that feels good but ultimately doesn't deliver any results. Ra Un Nefer Amun is very clear on this topic of manifestation and I couldn't be more pleased to have summarized what he has discussed in a one and a half hour video that I've brought down to about 15 minutes of dialogue that is going to summarize what he has disclosed about manifestation. This is Dr. Ra Unnefer Amun, Shechem Ur Shechem, aka King of Kings, and Ashim Ur Ashimu, Chief Priest of the Asur Aset Society, which he founded in Harlem, New York, almost 50 years ago. So, more than the entire time people have been alive, including myself, this individual has deep dived into spirituality, energy, frequency, and vibration, and far more. I hear he has published over 40 books. And so, I think that's pretty awesome. But what's more awesome is that, and the reason why I'm talking about him, is this is an individual that has studied many of the things that I have studied, but he has done it on a fundamentally and profoundly deeper level. So there are things that we can learn from this individual that can be an accelerant. It can accelerate learning accelerate understanding about many of the things that we have questions on. So I know that a important topic in the spiritual community is manifestation and how to manifest. And I have studied that and like many, I have seen mixed results. Sometimes my manifestations actually work out and sometimes they have not. And I've tried to learn from books that I've read. I've read approximately 20 books on the topic. And I shifted over the last few years from a reading level understanding to a applied practical level where you try to put these things that you study into practice. But there's always something more you can learn. And this individual has some great insight into manifestations and affirmations. In just a moment, I'm going to show some clips from a one and a half hour video I've shortened it down to about 10 minutes. 
I'm going to show you some clips from a one and a half hour video where he was interviewed and he dropped these gems and I pulled out the most important gems related to the topic of manifestation, affirmations, energy, frequency, and vibration. So the summary on what I'm going to show is this. The summary is this. Manifestations is based on action. Manifestation is based on tools. Focus on that word, tools. T-O-O-L-S. Manifestation is not based on words. So, many of the things that I've read and many of the things that I have watched videos on, I have done both. I've read and I've watched videos. I've read books on manifestation and I've watched videos. And so, the books put you into the right mindset. And I've read books on mantras as well. And I've watched videos. I've even spent money on video seminars about manifestation. I spent money on it. Not $20, not $50. I spent money on videos about manifestation. And what this individual reveals, Dr. Ra Um Nefer Amin, resonates with me. And the advice is free. And that is, you have to have the right tools for manifestation. But, I'm now going to ad-lib and put in my own piece to this. My piece to this is, the tools that he is talking about are not crystals. They are not singing bowls. They are not mala beads, they are not any of those things, and they're definitely not affirmations. This brother breaks it down very well. The tool that he talks about is having the right frequency. The tool for manifestation is frequency. The tool to make manifestation happen is frequency. Not saying some words. Because what he's going to explain is that words are meaning. It, what, words are what something means. It's the meaning. How you feel. What something means. But meaning doesn't translate to manifestation. What something means, so when you say an affirmation such as, I am powerful, that's something that means something to you, but it doesn't mean anything to the universe. It doesn't mean anything to the universe. Especially if it's just an affirmation where you say, I am powerful. Okay, you said it, great. You feel good, you've elevated your inner vibration to an extent, but it doesn't go far enough. It doesn't go far enough. To go further, what you have to do is that frequency that you generate inside has to be converted into a real frequency of intensity, a real frequency of intent, a real frequency of magnitude. And the English language words are not sufficient to do that. The English language words are not sufficient to do that. You need an actual frequency tool. So then I bring back into the mix singing bowls. You can actually use singing bowl as part of the tool set. But the master tool set is the right tonal frequency. Tonal frequency. That relates to music in a way, but not entirely, because he explains that as well. So, you got to have the right 
rhythmic words that have been tested and proven to produce what you are seeking to manifest. This is not something you can guess. There's an actual science to manifestation. And that's why people talked about it long ago, because there has been people who figured it out. It eventually got written down in books. It was put into practice. It eventually got written down in books, just not in the books that many of us have read in the West, just not in those books, because the books in the West are more fairy tale. They're more made up. They're more imaginings, imagination, without actual proof, without actual things that back it up. So what does that it tonal intonation mean? It means that you learn the actual rhythmic words that people figured out long ago and just use them. There's an actual set of words that you can use Right. So for a given thing that you're trying to manifest, there's an actual set of tonal words. And when I say tonal words, there are words that go like. <laughs> Not English, but you don't have to know another language. You just got to know how to pronounce the tones of the manifestation you seek because the universe works on energy. It works on vibration. It works on frequency. Those things are the universe. You just got to match it. You got to match that frequency. So that's why when you are trying to do a manifestation where you are saying some words, you're not matching the frequency. You are not matching the frequency. You're just expressing how you feel. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Because what you're trying to manifest is an is set up of actions, cause and effect. Something has to start somewhere and then it moves on and it so you gotta push those dominoes into place. And then you gotta push the first domino and then a chain reaction happens. But it has to be the right match the right frequency. And so those tonal vibrations that people figured out in other cultures is indeed the way to achieve manifestation, not the words you speak. And so if you do have someone that is famous or popular or well-known that teach manifestation, if you have somebody that's rich, and successful and wealthy, and they teach manifestation on the basis of affirmation and actions, keep in mind that what they have as manifestation is, and I'm going to clean up what I'm about to say, but I have to say it this way. You got some people who are master hustlers, and I'm not saying that in a bad way, but they know how to work hard, they know how to communicate with others. They know how to sell and do business and transact. They know how to get their ducks in a row as an individual, make good life choices and decisions, and manifestation flows naturally with them because they're in the frequency of success as an individual. That's another way to do it. But those individuals will then share their type of manif manifestation as the way of manifestation. And their path is a legitimate path. It just doesn't work for everyone where people are. Some people are in a place where they're not like a famous celebrity or famous personality in social media talking about manifestation because those individuals who are those at that level, even when they're down, even when they've lost everything, they have the recipe for success already encoded in them. So there is another path, and it's a actually tried and true proven path of manifestation, 
if you want to lean more on spirituality as opposed to your own efforts and muscles and time and that sort of thing. And that is tonal intonation. But here's the cleanup part. It takes just as much work to do manifestation in that other way that's been shown in these other cultures as it does to do hustle, to manifest through hustle. So that's what manifestation is. It is the tonal intonations. You know, Om Mani Padme Hom, Om Mani Padme Hom, Om Mani Padme Hom. That's a, that's a mantra of love, peace, and goodwill in the world. And you can do that tonal intonation if you do it just right. That's going to bring more love, peace, and harmony in your life. Okay? So I just, that's just one I happen to know off the, off the top of my head. It's, it's the first one that I've learned. But if you use both types of manifestation where you hustle and you put action in and you learn the tonal, tonal intonations that are linked to the manifestations that you want to have occur, then you have solid gold. So that's part one. Part two, affirmations. Again, I spoke earlier that affirmations can end up empty if you misidentify them as manifestation. Affirmations should be looked at then as a way to ready yourself, as a way to get your mindset where it needs to be so that you can engage your manifestation activity where it needs to be. I'm leaping ahead in that this is my own diagnosis. No one has told me that. I have not read that, but I do know from other areas of life when you're trying to succeed in something, like let's say work, because I'm good with work, like any work that I do, any job that I do for someone, where I'm an employee, I'm a master employee. I can say that objectively. I usually have the highest numbers, the highest accomplishment rate, the lowest defect rate, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a master employee when I work for others, right? And so what I know from that field of doing things, whatever industry I've been in, that it's, it starts with mindset. Skill comes later, but the prerequisite for skill is mindset, having the right mind to even accomplish greater things, better things, right? So I know that to be a foundation from just practical, common sense, everyday experience over multiple decades of being a master expert in doing things for other people, right? So when you translate that to the world of spirituality, it's like, okay, if I'm trying to do something such as a mantra, manifestation, I need to get the mindset in the game at the right level. So without further ado, Let's look at what Dr. Ra Unnefer Amin has to say about this aspect of us living in a physical world and transitioning into a world where we're able to harness manifestation in a more effective way. Um, I remember years ago, you know, 20 years ago, a lot, the majority of people thought of the world as physicality. Everything was physical. The body was physical. Everything, you just thought of everything as matter, as physical. About the technology of this body, the technology of our mind, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, the world we live in. How does this thing really work on a deeper level? And I think you are the perfect man to talk to about this conversation. So to start out with, my brother, you've accomplished so much in one lifetime. It would take several people, it would take people several lifetimes to accomplish what you accomplished in one lifetime. So you must know something that a lot of us don't know. That's why I got you here tonight. What is your approach to manifestation, my brother? Because I'm trying to learn tonight. You can send the energy in your body and the thoughts that you have, you can project it away from you to trap the people, the opportunities, and make real right. what is in your mind. But it happens with what? With energy. You spoke about 
you know, matter is not physicality. It's not solid. It's not, but what is in it? Energy. Energy is everything. Everything is energy. You see that? Mm -hmm. So once you learn how to use the energy that you otherwise experience as joy and, you know, worrying and anger, whatever, you can, if you know how to harness that energy to send your thoughts of what you want in life out, yeah. to attract the people and the opportunities and the resources to make it happen. So there's something that we call mantras where we say we we say a certain tone, we say a certain word, we say a certain frequency to create a health in our body, wellness in our body, or to attract things with us. So we got the ohm. Some people say say the vowels. It's different things that people say and you. To work a mantra, you have to repeat it over a period of time. Clear? Yes. Now, a mantra is not a word of meaning. If, if I say herring, it's not the same thing as me saying food. Food is a word that has a meaning. Herring is not a word that has a meaning. It's a vibration that sets something in motion within you. Excellent. Okay, got gotcha. you. So, so there are two uses for verbal language. One is to communicate information. Like when I say, I want to be rich, I'm using sound to convey information. Mm -hmm. But if I say, on, sharing, herring, cling, mm -hmm. that's not information. Those are words that do things, they do not. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you go to the Sanskrit, the word mantra comes from the Sanskrit language in India. Mm -hmm. And mantra means a tool. So when I say on, herring, sharing, or onk, okay, those are those are sounds of energies that do things. Gotcha. If I say, if I say I am rich, mm -hmm. what word is not doing anything? That's not a mantra. Yes. Okay. What happened is that people who don't really know what mantras are, what mantras really are, they confound they confuse it with the repetition factor. So if I, repeat, if I repeat something over and over and over, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, that's not a mantra. Mm -hmm. But people say, oh, that's become your mantra. No, it's not a mantra because mm -hmm. it's using words of meaning and not words of energy manipulation. If I say I'm confident, I have good self-esteem, that's what's, that's called an affirmation. You see that? Yeah, right? yeah. This is a, a, a chorus from a popular song by the uh, artist named DJ Khaled and other rappers t-pain and um actually it's a lot of people considered it uh you know a po a very positive song and actually obama played it i think when he um first got elected to the white house the first time so i'm sure. just reading the course real quick it says all i do is win 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 no matter what got money on my mind i can never get enough and every time i step up in a building everybody hands go up and they stay there and they say yeah and they stay there up, down, up, down, up, because all I do is win, win, win. And if you going in, put your hands up in the air, make them stay there. So this is, I'm, I'm using this as an example. This is music. This is a rap song. There's also R&B songs, soul songs, um, different types of songs we use to convey a message. A lot of the times, I want to ask you this. So when you're with your lady, your lady loves it. Ladies love when a brother sings to them. They're like, they when a brother sings to them, they be like, ooh, ooh, they, you know, they, they just feel a certain way for a brother singing them. Even if he can't sing, the fact that he's attempting to sing and hit them notes, it feels, it feels good to the lady. They say that this invisible energy is a divine feminine energy and that um, uh, uh, even the subconscious mind is a divine feminine energy. Does this invisible energy like us to sing to it the same way the ladies on, the, on our planet like them? like us to sing to them. When we sing to this invisible energy, does it react the same way the ladies react? Like, is the energy like, okay, I'll give you what you want now. You know how when the artist on stage, he sing, the ladies throw the drawers at them. When we sing to this invisible, if I be like, I am beautiful, does the energy respond faster than if I just say the words because I'm singing to the energy, my brother? You hit, you, you hit a very interesting note there. Okay, come on. The difference between speaking and singing is the ing, the verb ing. Uh -huh. Sing, singing, uh -huh. right? Yeah. 
this, you know, I can have talk and I can say talking. Yes. Now, singing, what if I drop the, the ing, is there a form of it? Like talk, talking, sing, mm -hmm. sing, not sing. I mean, what's the, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sing is like a, a verb in itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have an inactive form of it. Like talk and talking or active, inactive and active forms of the word, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sing doesn't have an inactive form. Mm. Gotcha. Now, okay. If you it, and 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 part of the, the the problem is that you know I would like one day to sit down with some of the rappers to really give them an introduction to the ancient wisdom. Because, you know, with such great genius that these young men possess and young women possess, if they had a chance to really immerse themselves in ancient teachings, okay, they will be able to really, you know, blow up the system here. You see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, when you say the ancient, um, you know, in, uh, Hinduism, I don't want to call it that, but the ancient yogic tradition, you find that there is, you know, a concatenation, the NG, the NG, right. you know, addition to words. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you add NG becomes on, right? Ha, you add the NG becomes ham. Act meaning it becomes NG activates the word, the sound. Right, right. And in the in the Hindu tradition, it's called the Anusvara. Okay? Yes. And the Anusvara, the Swara, has to do now with you know, breathing. Mm. Here we okay? go. Okay, so that when I'm singing, I'm activating the words, the oh. energy hidden in the words. You see that? Oh. Okay, and if my energy is good and strikes a vein, the young lady would come around. Mm -hmm. Now, the energy system within you. There are two systems within you. One is consciousness, will. The other one is energy matter. So the energy matter is called the feminine side of you. That's Ra. That is, you know, the Shakti, Kundalini. Yes. The force within you, the active form within you is the female side of your divinity. Mm. The, the masculine side of divinity is the consciousness will. We call it the father. You know, the energy is the mother, and why did the ancients make that relationship? Because the mother, the woman, is the one that produces. Yes, gotcha, the, gotcha. The, the guy gives the potential, but the woman's the one that carries and produces. Gotcha. So you have two sides in your, one is consciousness will. One side of you says, you know, I will stop smoking. And the other one says, uh-uh, not until I give you the energy. <laughs> That's the famous. So the thing is that you have to learn how to work the energy part of you, the chi, the kundalini, the prana, the ra. Everything, nothing happens without energy. That's the female side of life. You see, and you find that in in in, in ancient non-Western traditions, you know, the supreme being was was depicted as male female. Yeah. It's only in this male dominated culture of the Western world where the woman is not divine, right. you know. But that's you know what problem they have with women and black people and you know, people who are not, you know, yeah, and so on. So that's what's going on here. So you got to learn to see the two aspects of God because if you don't work both aspects of God, you look and especially you know, the feminine side of God, the energy. Everything happens through energy. Yeah. People don't go to wars, you know, uh, around ideas. They go to war to control the petroleum fields. They go to war to control, you know, the, the, the uranium mines. Yeah. It's energy that, you see, produces all the changes and effects in this world. And you have to learn how to man how to bring more of this energy into you. People say, "Oh, well, that manifestation, you know, it's, it's a power of the mind." Mm -hmm. it's the, mm -hmm. But the mind has no power until you energize it. Hmm. You know, same thing with your body. You know, I mean, right. you know, you have to energize your body, okay, in order to compete, to do things. So you got to learn to see the two aspects of God because if you don't work both aspects of God, you know, and especially 
you know, the feminine side of God, the energy, everything happens through energy. Yeah. People don't go to wars, you know, uh, around ideas. They go to war to control the petroleum fields. They go to war to control, you know, the, the, the uranium mines. Yeah. It's energy that, you see, produces all the changes and effects in this world. And you have to learn how to man how to bring more of this energy into you. People say, oh, that manifestation, you know, it's, it's a power of the mind. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the, but the mind has no power until you energize it. Hmm. You know, same thing with your body, you know. I mean, right. you know, you have to energize your body, okay, in order to compete, to do things. So it's way by the way, I never, I never sang for the women. I played the piano. <laughs> uh oh, there you go, there you go, brother. There you go, brother. Okay, you I played the piano. piano. Cause you don't oh. want to hear me sing. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear you, brother. Oh man, oh man, I'm gonna have really such good. a good time. Um, when is this book coming out? You said it, and and what's the name of it? End of the month. End of this month. The end the of science this month. The science of manifestation. The science of manifestation. Yes. And how can we get it? Oh well, I will. I will send you a copy and I'll leave my URL and everything when it comes out. Yeah, please do, please do. I'm very interested. I like how you said it's bigger than the power of the mind, because that mainstream, the mainstream spiritual community, all they, they, the main thing they focus on is the power of the mind. But you talk about we have to energize the mind, and I like your approach with energy and chi and prana. You know, I don't. I feel as though we don't focus enough on prana. And, and, and energy and chi. We don't, you know, what breathe and mind, What makes your mind function? Energy. Yeah. Energy, yeah. Okay. Well, energy doesn't depend on your mind. Yeah. Okay, so you got to learn about energy. Ra, chi, prana, kundalini, kung. You got to understand energy. That's what the ancient teach is all about. Mm. Let me ask you this. You mentioned kundalini energy, right? People often associate when, you know, when you read about Kundalini energy, the first thing you want to know, main words you hear associated with Kundalini energy is sexual energy. We always hear about sexual energy and Kundalini energy. My question to you would be, uh, my brother, say a person is um, feeling what we would call in this society horny. Should they go meditate when once they get that feeling? Like when a person feels what we call horny, their first thought is, "Well, I need to go have some sex because I have this feeling." Should horny be so also be associated with meditation because that may be a kundalini force activated within us that we can um, um, use for something else besides our sexual organs? Exactly. So when you become sexually aroused. Right, that's your life force now that is that, that has accumulated in a certain in your sexual organs or whatever. You see that? Now, yeah. rather than you, you have you, you have the choice to, or you might be, you know, impelled to discharge an energy in sex, or you can meditate and draw the energy out to the brain. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my, my my question to you: What might be what might be more useful to discharge an energy in sexual play or to energize the brain to make to make a million dollars? Because the brain works with energy. Is what I'm saying. And the brain, the brain hogs is a hog of energy and mm. and, and blood and sugar and so forth. You know, it's it's a little three point five. You know, what a few. It's a small percentage of the, the body. But it uses twenty five percent of the body's energy all by itself. What percentage? How much? Twenty five percent. Wow! Just the brain. Just the brain. That's your command yeah. center. Yeah, yeah. You see that? In other words, you know, your sexual organs are not going to make you rich. You know, <laughs> I don't care what your profession is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But the brain will. So you know, the 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 uh, people say, oh, you know, the mind, but. but Energize it. For example, one of the most powerful, you cannot separate the mind from the brain. Okay? Yeah. The whole thinking and perception of ideas and concepts mm -hmm. and, and parsing, you know, words and so forth happens. It's in the mind, but with the with the 
support of the brain. And the most powerful and important part of the brain is a little thin sleeve of tissue on your forehead called the prefrontal lobe. Right. You see right. that? Yeah. And in Kabbalini yoga, it's called the Ashinya Chakra. In okay. Kabbalini yoga, it's called the Oser, you know, faculty and the, the main faculty and so on. Mm. So this, this, this prefrontal lobe is the highest functional, you know, um, organ within your, within your being, within your physical being. You see that? Mm -hmm. You know, it determines how well you can focus, how well you can think. You know, all genius occurs here. Mm -hmm. Damage this and you become an idiot, you know, or it lowers your IQ and things of that nature. So my question is, do you know how to send energy? 